Now, I put that uh, material out there uh, because I am conscious uh, of time. Spend time with your grandchildren is, is increasingly entertaining. We have, we have one fella, young Compton, who just, every time he comes to close proximity with me, he wants to do a project. So we've got to find, we're off to Betty's shed to do something in Betty's shed. Well, this time it's a little bit different. His sister, Maeve, comes along and she has found two plastic bottles, which is no big deal. You could find hundreds of them at the back of the church office if you're looking for plastic bottles. But she's walking along, she's got these two plastic bottles and she's putting the ends together and she says, this is what, what do you think she's saying? I think I'll make a timepiece. I'll fill this bottle with sand and tape it to the other one. You know what it is, it's an egg timer. It's a, you know, the measure of time. You, you got reminded this morning about time. Anybody time conscious? I am. For those who want to know, it's uh, nine minutes to 11. I promise to be finished by eight minutes after three. <laughs> For those who are, have other time commitments, please feel free to move in and out as you choose. But we are time conscious, aren't we? And, and, and sometimes we're losing track of eternity because we've locked into time. Tick, tick, tick. Anybody stressing yet? Because there's four seconds that just went by and you weren't doing something. This measure of time can, in actual fact, become quite an issue. We can be driven by it or we can be measured by it. But I wonder if we've caught on to something. Caught on to something that the scriptures actually say quite clearly. He has made... Anybody know the beginning of Ecclesiastes 3? Ever, ever been to a funeral service and they read Ecclesiastes? There's a time for this and a time for this, a time to live, a time to die. By the time you get to the end of it, you're depressed. I'm thinking, my time must be nearly up. But you see this, this beautiful verse that comes out of the following of that narrative that's often used in that context, which is, which is helping people to realise that humanly we have a measure of time. I have an expiry date. I'm not rushing towards it, but I'm moving towards it. I'm looking forward to it. I'll get to that in a minute. But he has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Isn't that an awesome statement? Tucked away in the middle of that context of the Ecclesiastes the sort of narrative that says, woe is me, it's all going to add up to, I'm just going to be a pile of dust. But God has planted eternity in the hearts of men. It's very much a part of our being created in the image of God. There is that, that awareness buried away, rushed, I never stop long enough to look and see what, what shape it's in. But it's there, part of my createdness. And Jesus comes along and he makes this statement. This is eternal life, he says. To know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. Anybody heard that recently? Sorry to remind you, but it was last Sunday morning. We don't have to remember everything that happened last Sunday morning. But just to say there's a continuity. There's a continuity that you and I can appreciate when we gather on a Sunday morning to be realised. That yes, I'm giving this measure of time, but I'm anticipating that this measure of time that I vest in this place with these people in the awareness of the presence of the Spirit of God, this internal awareness and alertness that is within me will be kindled. It'll be stirred. It'll be rising up. It'll be, it'll be, I become aware that it's actually got a greater, greater measure in my life. The Apostle Paul in that passage 
Did you appreciate what, what Gerald was trying to do there? I'm, I'm sure. If you read that passage grammatically, it's one of the hardest pieces of scripture to read. You know, Don, Don McGill specialises in all the Hebrew names of the Old Testament. He's really good at it. Gerald's practising a long-winded sentence that the Apostle Paul rattles off to the church in Corinth. You actually read that passage and he's saying to these people, I'm giving up my best shot. What are you doing? That's my very, very condensed. But you read that passage, and I'm not analysing it this morning, but he's just saying, I, I've come to appreciate the grace of God. I'm catching on to what eternal life looks like, and I'm giving it my best shot. And in some ways he's saying, I hope you appreciate what I'm doing. He doesn't actually say that, but I just did. For he says, In the time of my favour I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. And that's Paul referring to God working with his people in the Old Testament context. And now he says, I tell you, now is the time of God's favour. Now is the day of salvation. Right now is grace time for you and me. Right now is an opportunity for us to experience what the scriptures talk about, the saving grace of God. Another dimension of my eternal identity being put in place. You ever thought about that? This morning you go away with, what did I think of church this morning? Or you can go away thinking, what happened to my eternal identity this morning? Ever, th ever thought of it that way? Possibly not. But I want to head, I want you to head, head you in that direction because that's what this is about. And Leon's reminded us of so much of the dynamic of actually being together, building each other up. The scripture talks about all of those types of things. So that I go away from this place knowing that my heart has been, as it were, it's connected in again. I, I've been focused on that eternal dimension of my relationship with God that Jesus has reconnected so that it can be just burning more intensely. And I go away knowing that a part of my eternal identity has been addressed. It has been worked on this morning by the gracious ministry of the Holy Spirit. So we have a bit of attention. We, we have this humanness, and it's the chapter just before this one that the Apostle Paul talks about the reality that most people are conscious of. This is the bit where he says, For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in its dimensions. For in the tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. And that particular, that's the best picture I could find of a tent. But there was a beautiful way that uh, Ray Stedman who wrote a commentary on, on first, uh, Second Corinthians, rather, uh, he, he described this, uh, he says, my, my earthly tent, he says, it's got pegs that are a bit wobbly and cords that are a bit loose. And you sort of think, well, that's the human reality. Most of us are conscious of that, but do we know what's going on inside for us as, as people who are following Jesus. And I want to just suggest to you a couple of things before I put that invitation to you to represent your life. We're not, going to, we're not going to sing just as I am. You did enjoy that, didn't you? Did you find it actually drew you? Did you find it actually drew you to focus? Did you see the lamb underneath and you started to think about that imagery? Did it help you? Because that's what it's about in the sense of these ways in which we have to take the testimony of a song or an image or a portion of God's word that would draw us into considering again and, and just embracing, taking hold of this which is uh, the restoring of our eternal identity. Wayne Jackson, in an article, he writes the biblical concept of time. He says time is not 
uh, it, time simply is. It cannot do anything of itself. Time provides the historical framework in which things happen. But time has no innate ability in itself. Now that, you were listening to Leon, weren't you? It's what we do with that measure of time that has potentially amazing capacities, huge implications, enormous possibilities. And one of the things that is, and I often use this image, that that eternal flame gets stronger and stronger again. Instead of it sort of looking to, if I can use the term, peter out, it is now becoming increasingly intent. And I'm, I'm totally okay. I'm totally okay about the update that will eventually happen. And many of us would be familiar with the beautiful passage. Again, something that's used in the context of a person uh, celebrating a person's life, a, you know, a, a, a life celebration that comes in a funeral service. And John 14. Every, every time I hear that, I think of the first house that Maggie and I lived in. And uh, we were married here in Victor Harbour at the Congregational Church. And we moved into a lovely big mansion over at Port Elliot. You can, you can actually see the mansion in fact, you can't see it anymore because it's all overgrown with shrubs. But there's this little cabin there. It was the fisherman's cabin it was known as in, in Port Elliot. It was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a one-room type thing with a lean-to on the back and one of these really flash outdoor loos, you know, the ones where you walk 15, 20 steps in the dark because there's no power out to it and, and you know, a roof that didn't actually keep the water. All the, all the mod cons that were the totally relevant. This was the mansion of 1975. This was the place everybody was wanting to get into. And you wouldn't believe the rent we had to pay on that. Pay on that. I think it was a dollar a week. Who could ever afford that? And we walked in the house. We had the guided tour with a real estate agent. We looked around. There was, it was carpet. Look, you wouldn't believe it. Exactly the same colour as the carpet on the floor. Either. This has probably come out of our cabin. You thought it was new when they put it down. Then I thought, well, oh, it's even furnished. There was this chair sitting over on the side wall. One chair in the whole house. We had a bit of furniture we were going to bring with us. And I thought, that's an odd place to put a chair. So I walked across to see why it was there. It was leaning against the wall. I pulled it away from the wall and I suddenly discovered why it was leaning against the wall. There was a big hole about the size of a basketball. It went straight through the wall. I don't know how it got there. It was something to do with the wood box. There was no fireplace, but it was clearly for the wood box. I think, well, this is it. This is our mansion. And, and yeah, it's a bit like our earthly vessel in some respects, isn't it? It's got the lean on it. Got a few abilities we didn't. But the good thing is, the good thing is, as much as I enjoyed that mansion, I'm looking to upgrade. Uh, ultimately, this is the one that I just got uh, notice of that we're moving into. You, you know, we're going to sell our house, we're, so we're moving into this one. We, we're, we're upgrading as we go. So that was, we, we got it for less than that. Yeah, we got it for 44 and a half million. But you love that imagery in John 14 where Jesus says, my father's house is extensive. And it's a reminder. And we, so we think house. I've just used a very poor illustration about a hut and a mansion. But we're talking about this earthly vessel has this amazing content to it that is of eternal nature. So what I'm wrestling with in the human is nothing compared to what's going to happen in the eternal and so I keep fueling that. You're listening to, to Leon before. He says, to search and to know and to experience. Did you hear him say that? I heard him say that. I'm holding him at his word. I'm going to watch Leon now to see him searching, knowing and experiencing. See, you, you get to watch me say, how much is Peter animated about his eternal destiny? How much are the eternal qualities that Jesus has reconnected and is reinstalling to restore that eternal identity? Is it happening? Or am I happy to plod through the tick, tick, tick? Let 
What Jesus has effected is that flame restored so that that eternal identity is actually increasing, increasing the dimensions within this human vessel. It's an amazing. This is the grace of God that he can actually make that new image, this new creation, 2 Corinthians 5 says, this new creation emerge and just get stronger and stronger and more and more apparent. And so the reality is, the Apostle Paul says, I live with attention. I live with attention that I know this earthly vessel's wearing out. But I also know that as I keep investing, as I keep presenting myself, that this eternal identity will be restored. And I will see it happening. John 3.16 says that Jesus came that we might have eternal life. That's not eternal life. It starts now. My life is being reshaped. And the more I allow that reshaping, reforming to happen, the greater will be, as it were, the testimony that I can speak into a person's life, that I can present, as it were, as an evidence that the Spirit of God is on site and working full time. Every moment of every day provides a wonderful opportunity. This quote, there is another aspect of time that is intriguing. It facilitates the acceleration of knowledge on the part of human beings. Now that quote was made by Wayne Jackson, Christian writer, and he's referring not to knowledge that increases and abounds. We know how fast knowledge is moving. We can't keep pace with it all doesn't matter how fancy the watch I get or the computer I get. I can't keep track of how much knowledge is abounding. But he's talking about this knowledge, this knowing, this eternal flame, knowing this eternal life, knowing this influence and ministry of the Holy Spirit, reshaping my eternal identity. And so I must finish, and I'm going to invite you to respond I'm going to invite you, and for those who can't run, you can walk. For those who need a walking frame, walk with the walking frame. If you need, don't need a walking frame, you can lean on the chairs down the side. But while we're singing our final hymn, which is Room for Jesus, another goodie, I just want you to walk down. I don't want you to stand. I just want you to walk down here and say, well, Lord, this, I'm, I'm in on this. I want to know this eternal life stuff. And I want it to become so radiant in my life that I haven't got a big issue about being a church that's getting older. I'm just, I've got the issue about being a church that's getting more brilliant. The, the testimony of Jesus shining with a greater and greater intensity. So I want to finish with this, not so much this passage, but at what it brings to mind. I've mentioned on a number of occasions that it was in the context of this particular fellowship that I came to faith in the Lord Jesus. And one of the things that were a part of that was obviously those songs, those testimonies that came with the music that were around at that time. Some of you may recognise this one. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Anybody recognise that one? Just three or four. I thought it would have been more than that. Anybody else recognise that hymn? Because if you don't, I'll start singing it, and then you'll, then you'll recognise it. Powerful. It was a powerful hymn based on that particular passage, First Thessalonians. Now, you can, I, I love the theology of that. I love the sense of anticipation of the... Uh, for those who need to know, it's 10 past 11. First Thessalonians talks about the return of Jesus. And I know that that's going to happen down the track. But there's a real possibility I'm going to meet him before he comes. So I want to be as prepared when I get to that point, not waiting for that point. You understand what I'm saying there? When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, when the roll is called up yonder, whether it's his, his return or when he calls me home, I want to be absolutely certain my name's in that Lamb's book of life. 
All right, and I've signed in. It's got my scribble on it. Between now and then, let eternal life reign and rule. Let us labour for the Master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. That's an oldie and a goodie. And it's worth saying, are we going to go for it? I want to be in that labouring bit, but I also want to be in that space where I just know eternal life is not a theology that I have. It's an experience I'm going through. Transform from one degree of glory to another by the grace of God. So I'm going to invite you to make a statement about your relationship with Jesus. Don't feel pressured, just feel pressured. All right, here's an option. I, I want to I make a statement about my relationship with Jesus. We're going to sing this beautiful song, Have You Room for Jesus, King of Glory. I'm pretty sure that's the one we're singing. Just checking with the musician. Yes, it's good. All right, so let's stand. And I'll pray, we'll start singing, and just mind out for head-on traffic, because you might come down that aisle and go that way, you might come down this aisle and go that way, but whichever way. If you can't make the full distance, just stand where you are and put your hands up. We want to just make a statement about our relationship with Jesus. Just, just loosen up a little bit and just say, Lord Jesus, I want to know this eternal life happening for me now. Let's start. Let's start. stand, and I'll pray, and we will sing. Gracious Lord Jesus, we thank you that our, our focus, our heart orientation, our mind orientation has been on you this morning. And again, as Leon's prayed, Father, through the words that we've spoken, through the songs that we've sung, through that simple, powerful celebration and the testimony of your word, we take delight, Lord Jesus, in saying, I'll keep following. I want to know this flame just getting brighter and brighter. And I want to know this eternal life dynamic happening now, even in the measure of time that you give to me, to your glory, Father, through the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen.